going on guys welcome back to the channel this is my 2014 Honda Civic Si sedan mouse mobile edition <laughs> anyway this is a video I've been meaning to make for a while now but it's basically going to be showing you guys on YouTube how to drive a car that has a manual transmission for those of you who don't know and would like to know. Now I learned how to drive manual six years ago. I was 18 years old. My buddy who had a manual transmission Subaru taught me how to drive manual in it. And then not even a year later, I ended up with this uh, Civic Si, which is manual only. And it's been so much fun to own for the last five and a half years. Um, but now I'm just about ready to sell it. So before that, figured I may as well get a few final videos with this thing in, um, including this one, which is how to drive a manual transmission. So I'm going to hop in, switch to the GoPro, and then we will get this show on the road. But for starters, I'm going to go over how you start it. So it's different from an automatic transmission in which um, you would either just stick the key in and turn it to start or if you have a push button like this you put your foot on the brake and then press the button and it starts up but in this car you actually don't press the brake you can if you want to but it's not necessary all you have to do is press the clutch it is highly recommended that you always start in neutral gear because i mean although you can start it in a gear it is highly inadvisable. It's safest to start it in neutral with the parking brake on at all times. So clutch in, press the button, car starts up. So this is a six speed manual transmission. First, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth and to get into reverse you go all the way over and then back in this car you do have a backup camera with dynamic guidance lines when you turn the steering wheel now reverse in different cars that have a manual transmission might be a little different sometimes you have to pull up on the shift boot here like in a volks or excuse me a uh, mini um as far as i'm aware that's how you do it in a Mini Cooper, but uh, in a Volkswagen, you actually push the shift knob down and then to the left and up for reverse. Um, I was getting Volkswagens confused with another make, so I do apologize for that. But anyway, here is the parking brake. Now, I always park it in neutral with the parking brake on. It is highly recommended that you leave it in first or reverse gear even if it's flat ground, but uh, unless I'm on a steep hill or I'm at the dealership where I don't want people to drive with the e-brake on, um, I will always park it in neutral with the parking brake on. I've had no issues. Car has not rolled away on me one time. That may differ by manufacturer, so sometimes you might have an issue with your parking brake, in which case it is better to leave it in gear until you can get that fixed. But yeah, so what I do is first I put my foot on the brake, I release my parking brake, and then I press the clutch and go into the desired gear, in which case if I want to move forward, I go into first. Then I slowly lift off the clutch while giving it a little bit of gas, and now we're pulling forward, and now I'm fully off the clutch. Now I'm going to go back on the clutch and go back into neutral. That brings me to my next point. When you are coming to a stop, you always want to go clutch in, neutral, and then clutch out. That may be hard to remember, but it will save your clutch in the long run. So you can downshift, and I will get to that in the driving portion of this video, but now let's move in reverse. So clutch in, reverse, once again, going to, I'm not going to lift all the way off the clutch yet. Now I will. Go off the clutch into neutral. So now we have moved in reverse. But anyway, um, as far as downshifting goes, I wouldn't recommend it unless you 
have gotten familiar with your manual transmission car. Like, for instance, uh, rev matching downshifts, they kind of intimidated me at first, but when I got comfortable with it, it was like second nature to me. I always do it because it helps slow me down and I don't wear out the brakes as much. Whereas um, if you just go into like from fourth to third without rev matching, that could potentially do a number on your clutch and you might have to have that replaced sooner. But yeah, it's always recommended that you rev match when you're downshifting. Otherwise, I would just simply recommend that you coast to a stop in the current gear that you're in or put it in neutral, but obviously you want to put it in neutral before you dip below the normal idle speed because then it gets really rough, really shaky. Uh, car feels like it's about to die on you. So you want to be extra careful when you're doing that. But now let's transition to the driving portion of this video. I'm going to pop the GoPro on and we're going to get going. All right, GoPro is on. So I'm going to start by putting my foot on the brake, take the parking brake off, put it in first gear. And we are off. You also want to make sure you don't short shift. I typically like to shift around 3,500 RPMs. So now we're currently just in fourth gear doing about 2,100, 2,200 RPMs. Yeah, we're gonna get out of this uh, neighborhood forest and get onto the road. But anyway, since there are no cars behind me right now, I'll demonstrate a rev matching downshift. So I'm gonna go cruise off, clutch in, lift the throttle, third gear, second gear i know those weren't the best so i'll do it again in a bit but uh get back up to speed here around this corner so i'm gonna go fourth to third that was a much smoother rev match this car is so much fun to drive I've really enjoyed it the last five and a half years. There were things about the ownership that I don't part, that I did not particularly care for, but that's for another video. For right now, I'm just going to enjoy it while I have it. Enjoy teaching you guys how to drive manual just like me. We're coming up upon the railroad crossing now, and then we'll be at the top of the hill and then on the road. I'm gonna just take this for a little drive around the country. What I really like about downshifting in a manual car is that you could be slowing down a hill and not even using the brakes. Or it'll be a while before you would have to anyway. So now I'm just gonna wait, make sure it's clear to proceed and go. So I'm in second gear right now and as I'm coming to a stop, going to neutral, clutch is out, my foot's still on the brake. If I know I'm gonna be stopped for like more than two minutes, I'll put the handbrake on 
and then take my foot off the brake so I don't have any feet on the pedals. The reason why you don't want to rest your foot on the clutch, whether you're in gear or not, is because that could prematurely wear out your throwout bearings. And I realize you replace your throwout bearings whenever you replace your clutch, but you don't want a chance having a clutch problem and being stranded in the middle of nowhere with no clutch and no ability to drive the car. So it's always crucial that you select neutral when you are stopped for even or I mean for any given length of time. Another thing I would recommend avoiding is uh, reversing up a hill. That could do a number on your clutch as you're having to modulate it and the clutch is not fully out. Reverse gear, depending on the car, can be a little tricky. Like, I know you don't always get to fully release the clutch when you're in reverse in a manual. That's because reverse actually has a ratio um, better than first gear. So that means you could be going faster in reverse at idle in comparison to first gear. Some people like to retrofit their cars with an aftermarket remote start system. And like I talked about earlier with how I park this car, I always put it in neutral and set the parking brake. That is how you should park your car if you plan on remote starting it. Do not attempt to start it while it's in gear. And another reason why I always park it in neutral is because there have been times where I did have it in gear and I forgot and then I popped the clutch and the car lurched forward a bit and then stalled even with the e-brake on. So just goes to show you sometimes that transmission can overpower the emergency brake and then you're going to go moving forward. Thankfully, nothing crazy, no accidents have happened and I was able to restart the car and proceed with caution. But yeah, always, always, always start it in neutral and do whatever you're comfortable with. So if you're comfortable leaving it in gear, do that. If not, leave it in neutral. Another thing I should note is um, you should not attempt to lug the engine. What I mean by this is don't put it in an overdrive gear and give it full load under 2500 RPMs. This could cause your fuel to pre-detonate and it could potentially cause issues with the engine. I'm not saying that's guaranteed to happen, but it could, so you don't want to take your chances don't lug the engine. So if you need to go faster, downshift to the appropriate gear, make sure you match the engine speed with the gear you're going into, and then do what you need to do. Like for example, I could go into third gear. Okay, I know that wasn't perfect, but that's the drop a gear and disappear method. I could have gone second at this speed, but that would have kicked me into the VTEC and it would have been screaming loud. And I'll demonstrate that for you guys when I get to the um, 55 mile an hour section of the country roads. Because I just love the way this engine sounds. If there's one thing I'm gonna miss about this car, it's the fact that it's got a manual transmission and that it just screams to 7,400 RPMs, which for a non-supercar 
that's pretty freaking awesome. Like the new Civic Si does not do that and that's because it's forced induction. The 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four is the last of the true Civic Si engines just because of its legendary performance, sound, and tunability. Like you could put a turbo on this, you could put a supercharger on it, you could E85 tune it, double your power with a supercharger as well. So there's all kinds of possibilities with the 2.4. And I realize I pretty much left this car bone stock apart from the suspension, but you know, that kind of stuff is expensive. So it's a matter of if I do this, am I going to get my money's worth out of it? But then again, that's probably a topic for another video as well. So here we are at the, or coming up on the 55 mile an hour section. I'm going to rev match all the way down into second gear. And I'm not on the brakes. Look at how quickly I am slowing down. Now I'm on the brake and I will shift into neutral. Look both ways, make sure it's safe and go. I'm gonna give it full load here. Oh my God. <laughs> It's not fast, but a car doesn't necessarily have to be fast to be fun. The zero to 60 on this is 6.5 seconds at best. Some have reported better, but it depends on a variety of factors, including the driver, the tires, the type of fuel you're using, proper environmental conditions such as temperature, um, Obviously, poorly paved roads would take away from that. So there's a lot of things you got to watch out for if you want to get the best 0 to 60 time. But yeah, when I'm doing about 70 in 6th gear, the engine is spinning about 3,000 RPMs. And I know that sounds a little high, but then again, 3000 RPMs on an engine like this that can rev to 7400 is basically nothing. It's like 1800 RPMs on any other car. matching and fourth gear now third second didn't even use the brakes all that much so now let's give it full load again <laughs> Even the birds are scared of me. But you see how much fun this car is. It's truly amazing how I sat in one of these cars like around 10 years ago 
and I did not think I would ever own one, but here I am. I have owned a Civic Si, and it's been a blast every single day of ownership. Like, it has never failed to put smiles on my face. I think that's enough of that. Let's chill. So we're in sixth gear, 55. And I am just enjoying the view of the country road here. All right, so that last clip there was filmed in Mexico. But anyway, I'm now at the gas station out to fill the tank and I just wanted to touch on this one thing I know it seems like common sense but when the car is running the only means of securing your vehicle against rolling away is to set the parking brake so you always want to make sure you pull that up before you exit your vehicle while it's still running say somebody's in the car you want to keep the AC running then you wanna make sure it's in neutral with the parking brake on at all times, and then you can take your foot off the brake and exit the vehicle. Because obviously you can't put it in first or reverse gear, let off the clutch and then get out, because then the car is gonna stall, it's no longer gonna be idling. Because the only way you can secure your vehicle with the transmission is to turn it off and put it in gear or turn it off while it's already in gear and let off the clutch. But anyway, I hope this video helps you learn how to drive a manual transmission. I think I've covered just about everything you need to know. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, turn on post notifications, do what you guys do best, and peace out till next time.